should be the easiest question in the world to answer. When did the Roman Empire end? But in reality, it's a tiny bit more complicated than it seems. There are three contenders. Let's start with the oldest one. The one that some of you know of is probably the fall of Rome in 476. Barbarians under Odoacer had taken control of the old imperial capital. Must be the end, right? This feels like a good end to the Roman Empire because, of course, Rome has been lost. But it's more complicated than it seems. First, Odoacer kept most things as they had been before. But more importantly, Rome was historically important but not really politically to the empire by this point. The jewel in the crown was really Constantinople, which had its own emperor. So even if Rome was temporarily lost, that eastern part of the empire kept going in some way or another for a lot longer. So 476 was not the end of the empire. That came much later. Speaking of Constantinople and the other emperor, we call the Eastern Roman Empire the Byzantine Empire, although at the time it was just called the Roman Empire. It existed before the fall of Rome and went on for almost a thousand years after it. Its size grew and shrunk many times. It had the first plague outbreak in Europe and ruled much of the Middle East and North Africa during the rise of Islam, which was a series of events which led to the empire being much weaker. Still, it kept going and then the Crusaders of the Fourth Crusade sacked it when they were meant to be going to free Jerusalem. They divided up the empire between them. Venice did especially well out of this, but it limped on still. But by the 1400s, it's on its last legs. The Ottomans are in control in Anatolia and are surrounding Constantinople. There's a siege, the city falls. Those same Christian nations that had sacked the city to set it on its downward spiral, devastated at losing it to the Muslims. So is 1453 the end of the Roman Empire? In a sense, yes. But I left something out earlier, and if I don't include it, then someone is going to say I'm omitting something key. And if I include it, someone else will tell me I'm wrong. So here we go. If we go back to the end of the Western Empire in 476, it breaks up into many, many Roman empires. Lots of people who want to take the title and keep it going. And one of those people is Charlemagne. It's a few hundred years later and he becomes King of the Franks. Pope Leo III crowns him as Emperor of the Romans on Christmas Day 800. But this wasn't an event that came from nowhere. There's also a bit of misogyny here. So this is way before 1453. So the real empire, aka the Byzantine Empire, is still very much alive. The Pope crowned Charlemagne partially to throw shade at Irene, the Empress of the Byzantines. You see? He says she can't be Emperor of the Romans because she's a woman. So it's all just a political power play. Then, 162 years later, Otto I runs with this idea and he becomes the first true Holy Roman Emperor. You may be familiar with the joke that it was neither Holy, Roman or an Empire. That joke comes much later, but it's pretty much true. However, it was very much a way to loosely unite Germany, which had never been done before. It trundles along for centuries. Then one day, this guy shows up. Yep. Napoleon. Austria controls the Holy Roman Empire by this stage, and Napoleon and France are almost constantly at war with Austria. So when he beats them in 1806, he gets some revenge and also dissolves the Holy Roman Empire. Everyone is a bit confused about it, but eventually it's confirmed almost 10 years later. So that's it. 1806 was the end of the Holy Roman Empire, and if you don't count that, then 1453 is pretty much the end. Thank you for watching to the end. If you liked it, maybe subscribe.